There are many lessons we can learn from Peter's sermon at Pentecost. Today we're talking about the three main lessons to learn on Cell Life Church TV. This is Cell Life Church TV. We invite you to join the conversation with pastors Brian and Kelly as they discuss an encouraging topic that is relevant to life today. Hello, Hi there. thank you for joining us once again in the Cell Life Church studio. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. This way you won't miss any of the videos we produce or other encouraging topics and posts helping you to be the church in your everyday life. Next week, we are going to be starting the five Sundays of Advent. Yay. Each week, we will, we will share an encouraging message based on the Advent calendar. We will also be sure to light an Advent candle each week as well. So please join us. Mm -hmm. As always, you can download each week's teaching notes to use in your family, your small groups, or just to share. Yeah. The sermon Peter preached right after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost in Jerusalem almost 2,000 years ago is arguably the best sermon ever preached outside of the words of Jesus himself. Peter shared this simple yet powerful message with everyone assembled in Jerusalem for the celebration of Pentecost. Now the church was just starting to come together. Jesus had ascended a few days earlier and had told the disciples to go and wait for the gift of the Father. Now there were about 120 disciples who had been with Jesus for a long time that assembled in an upper room and prayed for days waiting for the gift from God. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 4 says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. As they spoke, Jews who were assembled from around the world heard the simple message of Jesus Christ preached in their own language. Many of them were perplexed and confused and asked one another, what does this mean? But we also read that some made fun of them and said that they had too much wine. Well, Peter was emboldened to preach to all the people in Jerusalem. His sermon was powerful and effective, and it resulted in the conversion of thousands of people to Christianity. Let's look at what we can learn from Peter's sermon and how it can help us in our own lives. Now, there are three practical lessons that we can learn from Peter's sermon at Pentecost. Believe in the power of God's word, speak boldly about Jesus, and pray for the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Peter believed in the power of God's word and was unafraid to proclaim it to the people. Mm -hmm. Acts 2, 14 through 18 tells us this. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. Mm -hmm. Peter was not an educated man. <laughs> he was a fisherman. Yeah. He had learned his trade from his father, most likely. He would have heard the prophecies read from time to time when he was at the temple, but he was not a student of the scriptures at all. He spoke with authority and went back to the Old Testament prophecies that the Holy Spirit gave him knowledge of to start explaining what everyone had just witnessed and heard. People often want to know why things are the way they are. They want to understand the purpose behind a thought or a process. Mm -hmm. 
knowing the motivation for a thought or idea is critical for most people. Mm -hmm. In the case of this outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Peter needed to give the assembled people a scriptural basis for what they had just witnessed. Nothing else would do. That's right. The world will often use humanism or the wisdom of psychologists to try to explain things. Mm -hmm. That is what many did in the case of the first outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They assumed the disciples had had too much wine. <laughs> but Peter used scripture. Yeah. He backed up what they witnessed and proved it using God's word. Amen. Peter believed in God's word and the power of it. We learn from Peter's sermon at Pentecost that we too must believe in the power of God's word and be willing to share it with others. Amen. Amen. And this leads us to the second lesson that we can learn from Peter's sermon at Pentecost. Speaking boldly about Jesus. Now, Peter did not shy away from speaking boldly about Jesus. Acts chapter 2, verse 36 says this, Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Mm. Tough to argue with that. Yeah. <laughs> the boldness Peter and the others showed is incredible, especially for the day. They stood up in front of the assembled crowd of Jews from around the world to speak. They could be ridiculed more than some already were doing. They were definitely going to be questioned by the religious leaders. Jerusalem was under Roman occupation, and it was dangerous to have a large gathering. Yet, even with all of these circumstances, Peter and the others stood up in front of everyone and boldly proclaimed that Jesus was both Lord and Savior. Amen. Sometimes boldness like this escapes us. Mm -hmm. We are worried about what others may think. None of us likes to look foolish or be ridiculed. We do not want to risk getting in trouble or doing something to draw too much attention to ourselves. Yet that is exactly what Peter and the others did. They stood in front of everyone and got their attention, spoke with a loud voice, and later were taken and questioned about the actions and miracles they were performing by the religious leaders. Now, I see the same boldness today when I see our brothers and sisters in Muslim countries walking the streets, waving palm branches on Palm Sunday, each year proclaiming Jesus, like the picture. I see the same boldness when I read about common Christians in places like Canada and the United Kingdom going to jail because they refused to stop publicly proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ and reading scripture. The second lesson we learn from Peter's sermon at Pentecost is we must be unafraid to speak boldly about Jesus and his mission. Amen. Peter sums up his sermon by calling on the people to repent of their sins and pray for the Holy Spirit to come upon them. Acts chapter 2 verses 38 and 39 tells us this. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. There are many things we can preach from these two verses, <laughs> but today we learn that our knowledge of God and his word are through the power of the Holy Spirit and that we must proclaim Jesus boldly. To do those two things, we must pray for and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Paul tells us that what the gifts of the Holy Spirit are in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11, which says this. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. 
to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the by that one spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Mm. Peter teaches us that we must repent and make Jesus our Lord and Savior. Yeah. God is faithful and will fill us with the Holy Spirit and give us the gift of the Holy Spirit he has for us. Mm -hmm. Each of us has a gift. Some have more than one. Mm -hmm. At times, our gift changes. Yeah. The important thing to understand is God will equip us by the Holy Spirit for what we need to minister to others and boldly proclaim Jesus Christ to the world. Yes. The third lesson we learn from Peter's sermon at Pentecost is we must pray for the Holy Spirit to fill us, guide us, and empower us to do God's will. Mm. Mm. Well said. <laughs> so the three lessons we learn from Peter's sermon at Pentecost must be applied to our own lives. Yeah. We must have the courage to believe in the power of God's word, speak boldly about Jesus, and pray for the Holy Spirit to equip us and be with us always. Yeah. Peter's sermon at Pentecost is the best sermon to motivate, encourage, and empower Christians for service today, this very day, and for the future, until the day Jesus returns for us and calls us all home. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for being with us today. We look forward to hearing your thoughts please be sure to share this video with your family and your friends. Until next time, be encouraged in Jesus' name. Bye-bye. <laughs>